Okay, now we'll just start the computer with the CD-ROM support. Okay, um, now we'll just format the C drive. Amazing how fast it goes on a virtual PC. <laughs> We don't need a volume label. Now, this is the part where you get to hear one of my biggest recommendations. Now, on many computers, not just Virtual PC, because Virtual PC suffers from this too, on Windows 95, there's a certain part of the setup toward the end where it can no longer read the CD-ROM drive. Now, I've only encountered this problem with the virtual PC and on my Thriftstalgia computer in my bedroom so in order to rectify this and I actually do recommend this even if you don't have this problem what we want to do is we want to copy the contents of the Windows 95 folder on the CD-ROM to the hard drive so let's switch to the C drive okay we'll make directory um, C Win95. Okay, the directory has been made. Now we're going to um, copy the contents of the folder on the CD-ROM drive to the to this new folder. So um, let's just go ahead and switch the Win95 folder. Okay, now we're going to copy. E slash win nine five. And there we go. Okay, we can go ahead and remove the CD. Might want to go ahead and keep the floppy disk in there just in case. So let's just type setup. Okay, setup is now going to perform a routine check on your system. And for some reason, it will not work. For some reason, scan disk will not work on here because it says it's a compressed volume. So I'm not really sure what that means, but that's no big deal because setup will run anyway. And here we go. Isn't that beautiful? The Windows 95 setup screen. Okay, um, welcome to Windows 95 setup. Congratulations on your choice of Windows 95, the newest and Easiest way to do what you want to do with your PC, so it will take 30 days. <sighs> I'm tired already. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and click continue. In user license agreement. Okay, it's going to collect information about the computer. Yeah, let's we'll go ahead and install it to C, to C colon slash windows okay I always like here are the setup options you got typical portable compact and custom I always like to choose custom because I'm very picky okay it needs my serial number of course I'll probably edit this part out Okay, now it's going to ask me for my user information. Okay, um, Billy Core Company. I'll go put my. I'll go ahead and put my business in here. Core Computer Services. Oops. Services. Okay, it's going to analyze the computer. This part it will um, analyze. Uh, the computer will detect like your CD-ROM drive, your floppy and hard disk controllers, your video card, sound card, network card, and that kind of stuff. And since it's kind of weird, I'm installing it in kind of a weird way, it's going to, this is going to come up every now and then, so we'll just cancel out all this, just ignore this if this happens to you. Okay, we'll go ahead and let detect the network adapter and the sound card. Okay, I'm um, going to ask me if I want to install MSN or how should I say the Microsoft Network. 
um, let's see, Microsoft Exchange and Fax. It's 2010, so neither of those three will do me much good nowadays. So just click Next. Okay, let's select what I want. Okay, I don't need accessibility options. I'll go ahead and add briefcase, uh, character map, wallpaper, games, mouse pointer, don't need net watcher. And user's guide has some nostalgia in it. Okay, we'll keep paying in there. Put all the screensavers in there. Don't need system monitor. Don't need the resource meter. I'll add the tour for old time's sake. Delete all the communications tools and the disk tools, add all the multimedia, and that'll do it. Okay, we just skip through that, I don't care. Okay, here are the computer settings. Got the S3 adapter. Okay. This part is interesting right here. I've tried this before. You can see here, you can select either Windows 95 interface or the Windows 3.1 program manager. Now this will not make Windows 95 look like Windows 3.1. No, that all this will do is um, add Windows the Windows 3.1 program manager to the startup and it will and the program manager will just simply come up at startup which you can close out of so it's really n nothing different there so we'll just skip it that way. No, I don't need a startup disk. Okay. Copying when this is the final real screen here before it starts copying the files. Always like that little drum down there. Oh boy, now this is going to come up quite a bit here. I'll just edit this part out. I'll just look how fast it's going. <laughs> No, the Windows 98 setup takes forever. Same thing with the Windows Millennium setup. But Windows 95, it just flies through it. Funny looking at all these old ads here. Okay, this is the final screen here. It's finishing setup. Okay, now all I have to do is restart the computer. Okay, we got to remove the floppy disk. And, and away we go. Love that screen right there. <laughs> Especially that part. Getting ready to run Windows 95 for the first time. Okay, we'll just uh, work through. Okay, just put YouTube. Windows 95, but I probably don't know what I'm talking about by saying YouTube, but. <laughs> This is the part where it usually freezes up if you use a CD-ROM one here. Okay, we'll just, I like how on the Windows 95 setup thing you can go through all the time zones here like that. Okay, we'll just set it to my time zone eastern time disable that click apply and ok don't need a printer ok um, setup is finished configuring your system you must restart your computer before the new settings will take effect please click ok to restart your computer now I love that ta-da sound <laughs> Okay, we'll just type in Billy. Don't need a 
password. And there we go, that's setting up Windows 95. So we'll um, take a look at Windows 95 itself in the next video. So this is Billy Core signing off on July 2nd, 2010. Goodbye.